G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for following my contents, I do appreciate it. Super Rugby Round 13, Highlanders versus the Western Force. At home, with a zoo, and the only animal on the field seems to be Ben O'Keefe, the referee. But overall, this was a very dominant performance by the Highlanders. The game was basically over, 50 minutes in. The Western Force looked absolutely out of it. Nobody was fronting up in their tackles. Got, uh, Highlanders was able to get over the game line at will. Western Force was throwing away penalties left and right. Uh, everything, the set piece defense was poor in the lineouts. The Western Force, and, and you know, just when you think things was getting really, really bad, Western Force gets a yellow card, and then a red card immediately, pr pretty much immediately after. And, and as a result of the red card, Western Force, so the, the yellow card was Kaitu, the hooker, so the Kaitu, uh, the hooker coming off the bench. Oh uh, no, no, yeah, Kaitu. So he gets yellow carded, right? Uh, and then the, uh, and then like few minutes, like three minutes later, Kahui, the the Western Force do the kick through. Kahui chased it down. One of those things, head on head collusion. Both players were ducking. He was uh, chasing down Michu Han at a fullback. Both players were ducking. I thought this should have been yellow at most. But both players were ducking, colliding into each other, uh, head collision, head, head clash into each other. Referee deemed that was reckless by uh, Kahui. Red card. Uh, and so the Western Force is down to 13 players for the last maybe 15, you know, 15 minutes, right? And a scrum occurs. So basically the... The yellow card is about, to, this was like 75th minute, a scrum occurs. So the, the yellow card is just about to finish at this point. Because the hooker was off the field for the Western Force, they have to go to uncontested scrum. And as a, as a result of going to uncontested scrum, Western Force had to take another player off the field. So they had to go down to 12 players for this, because as a result of this un uncontested scrum. Which... Which, you know, which, you know, with the yellow card finishing, the, they would have been, yeah. So they basically had to play with 12 players for like a minute before the yellow card finished. And due, this was like massive confusion as well. The game was already over. No, like Western Force had no chance of winning at this point. And the, the referee spent about five minutes trying to figure out who's going to be on the field. Is it going to be uncontested scrum? Is it not going to be uncontested scrum? The Western Force put on their tight air props, claiming that he could play hooker and he has done hooking before, which is like fine. Ben O'Keefe says, nah, he's on the team sheet, he's not a hooker. Therefore, Ben O'Keefe forces, forces the Western Force to play without a hooker and uncontested scrum and going down to 12 players. And then this was for like a minute. And then immediately after that, the player gets back on, everything's back to normal. And they spent about five minutes trying to figure this out. That only affected the game for a minute. And what's what was really weird is that there was two yellow cards prior to the red card. Both yellow cards were basically shoulder to head, which is yellow card. But both yellow cards seems to me had a wasn't that much of a duck in it and for some reason the Richard Kahui despite the fact that he was ducking both players were ducking Ben O'Keefe says there was no mitigating factor red card so really 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 bizarre inconsistent refereeing there let me know why the Richard Kahui one was the red card and the the two shoulder charges to the head so one by uh, Kaitu'u there was another one by the uh, number five, Josh Dixon. I think there might be another one. Was it another one earlier? Um, and then basically, all of these were just, you know, shoulder to the head. Um, I think the Josh Dixon one was particularly rough on him because he was like, he had, Ian Pryor was running away. He was basically tracking Ian Pryor and Pryor threw like, you know, a flick ball inside. So he quickly switched target from Pryor to the new target. And as you know, you're making like a split decision with, with one second decision to try to make a tackle on the other guy, he collides into, he clashes into the other guy with a high shot. And he was also ducking as well. So again, how is that a yellow when 
Richard Cahoot. In fact, I thought that shouldn't even be a yellow because it was like, yeah, like both were ducking. He was making a split second decision to turn around to make a tackle. Uh, yellow card. And then the same thing with uh, with Kai 2. Kai 2 one was a little bit more obvious. The both player look like shoulder to shoulder and slide up to the head. Still yellow. Um, but then the bizarre one, we've seen this probably a million times now at this point. Literally, head to head collusion. Both player were ducking pretty low. I don't know how much lower can Kai 2. Uh, uh, Kai Hui go and Mitchell Han is like what five foot ten maybe not even that like five foot six and they slam each other slamming each other both whatever ducking I honestly don't know how much lower can Kai Tu uh Kai Hui even go like he would be like touching the ground if he goes any lower red card head collusion red card so really really bizarre inconsistent referee yeah really um not much else to say this is the force Maybe firing your coach mid-season was not such a good idea. The force defense was basically not fronting up this game at all. There was a lack of leadership from Ian Pryor. I thought he was the captain. He was on the field uh, as a starting number nine for the entire game. Missing kicks. Not really taking the leadership role as good as I thought. And the Western Force, like I mentioned, giving away way too much penalties. The... Highlanders, on the other hand, really look like they're a superstar team this game. They have never looked this good this whole season. There was abundance, like really just line breaks left and right. The Western Force was just not fronting up the defense. And the Highlanders had, um, what's his name? Sam Gilbert at number 10. He was exceptionally well slotted. 100% of his conversions, which was incredible. Like some of these tries were right from the sideline, left-hand side, right-hand side slotted in regardless so i thought it was really impressive and it was able to make quite a few nice line break as well here and there just really to mix things up on top of his role like ordinary role as uh number 10 and uh fakatava we have to talk about this man once again he was unbelievable this game he came onto the game came onto the field like this guy has so much talent it's I, I can't wait for him to play in the All Blacks. Like, he's just unbelievable. He could literally be the best in the world. Like, there were things he can do, uh, like, you could not imagine. He scored two tries this game. Two tries as a reserve. Uh, just being in the right position. Extremely high energetic. Just being in support, being in the right positions at all times. The first try he scored was literally because he made the turnover at the breakdown. Okay. I, I, I mean, this is just something that you hardly see from a, from a, from a, from a, uh, what do you call it, from a, from a halfback. He recognizes it was an opportunity to get a turnover, the breakdown. He gets in there, turn off the ball, gets a penalty. Following up, uh, following that, that, that turnover, he gets a well-rewarded try. And then he also he scores a try in the last minute of the game. Just being, being in support, leaking out of the players left and right. Just unbelievable play. This guy is so good. So yeah, on the 57th minute one as well, it was like uh, he, he gets a turnover and then like Hollanders did like a kick through. The ball bounced uh, bounced uh, off the ground. He just like get there, determined, grab the ball off the air, plants the ball down. Unbelievable player. This was, yeah, was just, um, yeah, and he's like a tiny player to get this ball. Uh, I just don't know how he even does it. I can't wait. This guy is so promising. He's so damn good. Uh, Meta LA2, the big number eight, also crashed through a couple times. Just very, very physical, very dominant, looking quite well for the Highlanders and maybe a potential prospect for the All Blacks as well. Uh, there was a more try. There was just, yeah, everything you can think of the Highlanders scored against the Western Force. So nine tries to two, 469 run meters for the Highlanders, 263 for the Western Force. The carries you can see is pretty similar, 97. To 113 so both teams had similar amount of balls but yeah the run meters shows that Haaland was just the western force is not fronting up in the tackles turnovers conceded seven to uh to western force 11 tackle 152 to 124 interesting how this like some of this missed tackle count i'm just really bizarre 19 missed tackles to 14 western force so they're not actually missing tackles they're just not fronting up on their tackles some players uh, I mean, this is two things, right? When the uh, when when the Highlanders are running, the Western Force are not uh, were able to not able to shut down the, the the ball carrier before the advantage line. So the Highlanders are always going forward when they run the ball, 
also the, the lack of missed tackle also could mean that the Western Force was not even in place to make the tackle. Yeah, so there were so many like half breaks that ha Harlan was able to make, just get the ball out, and then uh, off they go. Then uh, no one is able to touch the players from there going forward. So if the tackle is not attempted, it's considered it's not considered missed tackle. But in theory, those should all be missed tackles because you you were not even in place to attempt the tackle, and that's just yeah. Anyway, kicks in play twenty to eighteen. A lot more tame by the by the Highlanders. Usually, the, you see the kicking game in full Highlanders in the in the thirties. So more tame kicking this this round, but worked out much better for the Highlanders with boarding hand lineouts. One loss for Highlanders, four loss for the Western Force. A lot of these losses were during the period where Western Force had a yellow card with a hooker, a reserve hooker. Uh, and that's basically what happens. Penalties considered. Both teams have given out penalties. 14 penalties for Highlanders. Western Force giving away 15 penalties themselves. But yeah, it was just one of those things where uh, when Highlanders were getting those penalties, Western Force just not able to front up to hold out the attack. Whereas when Western Force attacks, they just looked a bit flat. So there was only, what, two tries by the Western Force. Ian Prime missed both kicks and they were pretty yeah easy kicks i thought uh, jeremy thrush gets the first one for western force and then um what happened in the second one? Oh yeah so the second the second try score basically the harlanders had a um yellow card the number five gets the yellow card so basically western force had a player advantage and using taking advantage of that one player bonus they scored that second try i think it was a more try for memory but yeah overall i don't know I don't know what else to say. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Fakatava. I kind of like really excited to want to see him play for the All Blacks and see how he goes. At this point, despite you know him being literally in the same team as Aaron Smith, he's already looking much, much better than Aaron Smith, to be really, really frank. The the dynamic, uh, and he brings a new style into the game when he's on the field. The variety that he brings, the urgency, the pace. Everything he does is so good. Uh, I would be really interested to see if he gets the start for the All Blacks over Aaron Smith, or if he's just going to get the uh, the uh, the reserve halfback position once again. He is going to be a very good one, very important player for the future of the All Blacks. Uh, hopefully, they groom him and you know give him the opportunity that he needs to be to be great. He could be the, he could be better than Anton Dupont, to be really frank. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. The big game is coming up. Brumbies versus Crusaders at, uh, what is it, at, in Canberra. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys a bit later for that one. Cheers.